Yo, what up, Doe? I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson, and welcome to the offseason. And, of course, I am here with the Nasty Boys, Big N Ways. What up, though, fellas? What up, though? What's good? What's good? What's good? I just want to say, um, got a lot to talk about this week, so I don't want to waste a whole lot of time. Let's go ahead and get this toast going. This is going out to all of my fantasy footballers, man. I hope y'all paying attention because the offseason is active. Damn. Who we got the info? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is, uh, we, we're counting down to the showdown. The showdown will be back before too long. Of course, first things first, I got to give a shout out to uh, the groups that we endorse, the Facebook groups we endorse. The BSB football group, that's the Broad Street Bullies, as well as, of course, DSWFFG, the always dramatic and always active and always fun. SWFFG, Southwest Fantasy Football League. So big up to them, Southwest Fantasy Football Group, I'm sorry. Both on Facebook, if you are not a part of a group, even if you are, if you're a fantasy football head, you've got to join these two groups. It's BSBFFG as well as SWFFG. I promise you, you will enjoy yourself is you gotta have thick skin in the SWFFG because they talk a whole lot of shit. Over in the Broad Street <laughs> Bullies uh, group, very calm, very cool. We're gonna throw yep. up articles, we're gonna talk a little shit, throw up a little couple graphics. But you go over to that SWG or FFG uh, group, yeah, and you better be able to take a lash and be able to keep on moving. It's going down, and they don't take long to initiate you, they initiate you early. <laughs> yeah, they, they really initiate you early, they ain't gonna they get, get us early. early. They don't get you day one, but they're going to get you early. Oh, you they got me away. They you got me away day one. <laughs> you ain't getting through a week. You ain't getting through a week. You're yeah. not going to survive a whole week without without getting rad on, without getting get, coming at They're they going to come at you before the week is over. Trust me. Trust me. So big up to them. I just want to do a quick breakdown of who at EFG, the collective, which we are a part of, are the Kings. And then SWG, uh, they are like the wannabe kings. They are kings with an asterisk because uh, it's their group, right? So they, so they, they can, they can, they can king themselves. Yeah. Um, but and it's cool though. I want us to give a big shout out though to Johnny the Mechanic and uh, his son Chris. Um, we gonna get to a story about them a little later. Uh, but so I'll, I'll, I'll save that. I'll pocket that what I was about to say because it's coming up, but I do want to say this is a little breakdown of SWG for y'all or SWV as I like to call them. Johnny the mechanic is the manipulator, the master manipulator. Chris, he's the comic relief. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apply next year. And Acorn is the flunky. There you go. So that's that's the breakdown of how they roll. And big up to Will. Will White. Will White is the only real ball that they got. Mr. Perfect, he talk a lot of trash. He have a good season, but then he falls out. He never, he's he's a non-factor in the playoffs. The comeback kid, CJ, I got love for CJ. What up, though, nephew? CJ is the opposite. He has a rough season, but if he gets into the playoffs, watch out. But the rest of them cats, <laughs> write them off, write them off. I was just going to say, I'll be real. I've been here almost a year. I'm coming up on a year here uh, next month over in uh, July, uh, mid-July. And I only know of three people in SWG, if I'm going to be absolutely honest, since the three people you've named, and uh, Johnny, uh, Chris, the and- Manipulator. The manipulator, the comic relief, and the flunky. <laughs> so I look. The I look, manipulator, the Joker, and the flunky. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get on with the show, man. I got a lot to talk about. <laughs> Yo, no, I got nothing but love for the SWFFG. I got nothing but love for BSB Fantasy Football. They BSB endorses the show. SWFFG does not because there's, there's that kind of group. Okay, 
they do that not is. endorse the show, but we endorse the group. So I we I, I I roll with them, and that's that. I get kicked out. I usually get kicked out before the year is over. So I might be out before the year is over, but sometime during the season, I normally get kicked out. <laughs> but it don't stop me from winning. Anyway. Let's talk a little basketball before we get back into football. The Miami Heat has tied the series. I don't know if you all have been paying attention, but they went out big game one and they came back game two and pulled it off, man. Have you been paying any attention? What's your thoughts? Uh, Didn't they come back from like down 13 or uh, close to 20 and end up winning? Uh, Yeah, they were getting beat. So they came out hot. They took a big lead. And then they, then Denver got hot and took a big lead back. And then in the fourth quarter, Miami took over. But they got beat the game one like they stole something. Right. So <laughs> everybody was game. screaming. A lot of people were screaming sweep. Yeah. Yeah, that's what it was looking like game one. But the Heat, it tied it up, man. I think they're, I think, I think the Heat's going to be a still take it for granted here. I, I'm still going with the, the Heat winning this finals. And we'll see. And you know, and, and not that I don't think they're being taken for granted anymore. I just think Denver is a better team, but the Heat is better coached, and they just got a whole lot of heart. They scrappy yeah. as hell, and they did do what I said they were going to do. They brought Kevin Love in off the bench. He's been sitting since – like game two of the last year. I'm thinking he's been sitting like three or four games. They've just been sitting him. He ain't been hurting nothing. They just haven't been playing him. But they brought him back in, and that extra size made a difference. You know, they got they got that size in there, and all of a sudden they didn't look like the small team anymore. But Joker still dropped like 41, but I saw an interesting stat. When Joker scores 40, Denver lose. There's not They have not won a playoff game when Joker scores 40. Hmm. Oh, more. Interesting. Yeah, that's so. In other words, what they do is, if you let him score and take away everybody else, you can beat him. Yep. Because he's a he he's big as he is. He's a pass first big man. Hmm. Right. He is a pass first big man. He's always looking for that open guy, and and if that and if you take that away from him, he's got to score. And because he's passed first and not aggressively, uh, not an aggressive scorer, he won't take over the game like that. He takes over the game when he can get others involved. But if you can take those others away, you can beat them. That might be the formula. I think Miami figured something out. Hmm. You think they're going to keep Hero on the bench, even though he's able to come back? I don't know. I don't think they, I don't think, I don't think they're going to go into any game the way they came into the last game because Eric Spolstra has turned into one of the best coaches in NFL. I mean, in the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's one of the best coaches in the game right now. He, he, so he, damn he, good he knows that, that, that to keep some stuff under the hat, as I grabbed my hat, uh, it, it is helpful in the playoffs because you're playing the same team over and over again. So it's easy to get prepared for me, but it's hard to get prepared for me if I keep some surprises, if I keep something up my sleeve. Right. Right. So it's going to be interesting, man. Well, he had but, a damn good teacher, so. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Pat, Pat, Patrick Riley. Patrick Riley. And if you saw Glory Road, there's an interesting story storyline that includes Patrick Riley. Haven't seen Glory Road. I have. Oh my God, y'all got to see that movie, man! What do you mean you haven't seen Glory Road? Nope. Are you serious? Neither one of y'all. I have not. You've got to see that movie, man! I'm telling right. you, make it a point to find that film and watch it. Absolute classic, phenomenal movie. It's about uh. Um, the first all black college basketball team to take the court, and it's a true story. Okay, came out in two thousand. Pat Riley was Pat Riley was playing for Duke at the time, and they had they had the racist coach that was. Uh, it, you got to see the movie. It's a whole lot more to the story than that. A whole lot more. I'll be checking it out. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah, you'll you'll love it. I'm telling you, you will you will not watch it once. I'll say it. I'll put it that way. You will watch that movie again. You will okay. watch it more than once. You will definitely watch it more than once. Okay. I've seen it several times. It's almost essentially what you're trying to say is it's basically the remember the Titans of basketball. It's it's in that vein. Yes. Okay, I like it. It'll give you it will give you a little bit of that vibe. I, I okay. I'm excited to watch it. A little bit of that vibe, absolutely. Good, good analogy. Um, sticking with basketball. Sticking with basketball. Kyrie Irving is trying to, how would I say, orchestrate a trade right now. Yeah. If he's successful, what he would do would bring to Dallas to join him. And Luka Doncic, LeBron James, and Draymond Green. Okay. That'd be interesting. That would be a very interesting big four. Hmm. <laughs> I read. Biggest, that would be the biggest super team ever. I won't say that, but it would be definitely a super team. <laughs> But he, I, I'm curious got, how it would work, though. Right. Um, it's, I don't know how they mesh. I mean, I know Mark they, Cuban's rich, but he I don't think he's that rich. Geez. I think where they mesh is... He's that rich. That's, the way ahead, they, where they mesh is their level of competitiveness. And that do, is what I'm, they drive. But I'm saying to their games, they, I don't see how their games necessarily complement one another. No. It doesn't. Uh, um, LeBron is a, is like a, a point forward. Luca is a sh- Luca can shoot, but he's a he's more of a. It's it's the, the games. It's going to be hard to see how the games mesh. I would be I would I would be curious to see it. I would love to see it. Quite frankly, just to see if it works. I don't I don't think their games fit. I don't think they're a good fit. No. And if they. If, if they're not a good fit, if I'm right, it's not going to happen because LeBron won't do it. LeBron won't do it if if and he has a no trade clause, so you can't just trade LeBron. LeBron is a free man; he gets traded if you if he lets you trade him. He's never been traded. He's never. That's one thing I respect about. Him. He's never been traded. He's never fought his way out of a out of a team. Ran himself out of town. He's never violated a contract. He's he's. Signed the contract. He played through that entire contract. You're going to honor it. I'm going to honor it. Right. That's, been, that's been his motto. I'm going to honor this contract, and so are you. That's the no trade clause, so you can't all of a sudden dishonor the contract. Nope. You, I, you ain't got no out, and neither do I, and I'm going to sit. I'm not going to get out, and we're going to sit here. We're going to play this contract out, and as a free agent, I can go and do whatever I want to do. So while people talk about him jumping teams, everybody, every, every, that's what I call the LeBron rule. It only counts against LeBron. Every year in every sport, there's free agency. Players yep. leave one team and go to another. It happens every year. We only hold it against LeBron. We don't hold it against Deion Sanders, Shaq, Durant. We don't hold it against nobody else. So why? All these other motherfuckers that didn't did it. Even the other sports. You know what I'm saying? We don't hold it against nobody but LeBron. But but one thing, and so that's one reason I don't think it's going to happen. I don't think LeBron is going to go. I don't think he's going to go either. But I think it's because of Kyrie's character. What, no, what he likes Kyrie. I, he likes Kyrie. He can handle yeah. Kyrie. He won a championship with Kyrie. Kyrie, Kyrie went off the deep end uh, after he left LeBron and, and then – bit his tongue and said, I'm, I'm sorry, I left. I, I see that it takes more than I thought. It's more work than I thought to be a leader. Yeah. It's harder to lead a team to a championship than I thought. So I, I he gave LeBron his props after he left because he wanted to, he left LeBron because he wanted to do his own thing. So I don't think that bothers LeBron at all. LeBron thinks he can handle it. I think LeBron, LeBron thought he could handle Russ. You know, he think he can handle Kyrie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Said, I, I, that's not why I don't think I we just see how that one worked. <laughs> not, not at all. 
I I personally don't see it happening, but it is a very intriguing proposal. Yeah, I think so too. But speaking of LeBron, LeBron is also did made news something in another way. LeBron is the first active basketball player to become a billionaire while he's still active. That's because of all the other cookie jars he got his hands in. Jordan had his in a lot too. He had a lot of money, but yeah. he didn't become a billionaire until after basketball. Same with Kobe. But LeBron is an active, still an active player. I think it's because he's lasted so long. Yeah. yeah. Um, and 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 at such a high level. I mean, the dude is still averaging damn near thirty point. He damn near a triple double, twenty like twenty eight nine and eight something like that. That's yep. a, 28 points, nine assists, and eight rebounds for, uh, or 28 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists for, that's for ways, because you don't know what I meant by 29, eight, and 28, nine, and eight. He ain't know what I meant. <laughs> I, had to, I had to explain that for him. Uh, 28 points, nine rebounds, and eight assists per game was his average in year 20. That's, in, that seems, that's impossible. That's like that's like incredible. Yeah. When you look at Kobe's numbers in year twenty, it didn't. It was nothing. That it pale. It, come on, it's not even close. And Jordan didn't get to year twenty. Yeah, Jordan only got to what fifteen? Fifteen. Um, but yes, he's a billionaire now. First actual player to be a billionaire. Boy. I congrats to him. I'm not gonna knock him at all. He's doing his thing. He's doing it legally, and that's all I care about. And he stayed out of trouble. No scandals. No scandals. Right. You know, he had the one. He had the one mishap with when he left Cleveland. He got some bad advice, and he did the decision show and all of that stuff, and, and took his talents to Miami, and he took some bad advice, and that 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 was a that was a scar that he never actually lived down. But other than that, man, he's never never. Did no wrong, man. He ain't get caught right. up in bitches. He ain't get caught up in no with no trouble with no niggas and no bullshit. You know, and I appreciate that. Appreciate that. Uh, did he ever start up start the shop back up? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I, I, that show was dope. That show was very good show. Very good show. Uh, speaking of good shows, um, Shannon Sharp is leaving. We talked about it last week. Shannon Sharp is leaving undisputed. And um, what's next for Shannon is what I thought about today. Uh, will he? I mean, not Shannon, but for Skip, because we talked about kind of what, what Shannon might do and, you know, why he did it. So first off, I want to recap that. Why did Shannon leave? We talked about that briefly. We all had an opinion. Marcellus Wiley, who uh, also works for Fox Sports One, he had an opinion on why Shannon left, and I thought it was interesting. So here's Marcellus Wiley of Fox Sports 1 as to why he thinks Shannon Sharp took off from Undisputed. Here's the real of what's going on over there and why we even got here. Skip Bayless runs that show. Not only does Skip Bayless make the most money over there, but he has the most power in terms of how he runs his show. So here's the problem. Skip is here. Shannon started here, used the relationship with Skip Bayless to get there. Shannon started to get way more popular. So when you're doing this in your real world, in your outer show world, but inside the borders and structure of the show you're on that's giving you all this jet fuel, nothing's changing. Even when you surpass Skip Bayless, you still have to be under him in terms of the terms of the show. They're not talking like friends. They're not even talking like friends that are beefing. They're talking like strangers. Skip knew he can always talk to Shannon because he knew he controlled the show. Skip also felt that he could control the show and control Shannon's job security. Shannon finally just smelled the roses, finally just took a big inhale and was like, dog, why do I have to deal with all of this? What happened was, there was a power struggle. There was a power dynamic that shifted right before their very eyes. I'm sure that Shannon wanted to adjust it. It's just Skip was stuck in his ways. So now Skip is gonna be stuck without the uber popular co-host named Shannon Shark. So now that question looms to me. What happens with Skip? Does he, 
because it's going to be – he was uh, very fortunate. I won't say lucky. I think he was very fortunate to land Shannon Sharp when he left Stephen A. Smith. But after Shannon Sharp, can he land another person that's going to be of the caliber or, as Shannon turned out to be, even beyond the caliber of a Shannon Sharp? I don't think so. Brandon Marshall has a good relation with relationship with Skip. Brandon Marshall will be interesting. Skip has I've a good Brandon... relationship with a lot of people, man. But Lil yeah. Wayne, a lot of people come to the show. Eric Dickerson. I can uh, see I can see I can see Brandon Marshall doing it. Maybe Nate Burleson. I think Nate, I don't think Nate will do it. Nate's too big. Okay. Yeah. Nate don't need it. Nate don't need it. No, I forgot. He's on CBS this morning. Now. Yeah, he don't need it. He don't need it. Yeah. No, never mind. I could see Ooh. Eric Dickerson or or um, Brandon Marshall, like you said. What are you saying, Waze? Jason uh, Whitlock. Just based off of what I've seen recently and haven't seen recently, Michael Strahan. I, again, uh-huh. I think he's too big. He's too I big. Don't think he's good. Michael Strahan is too to. big. Whitlock is it? It's an interesting choice, though. Yeah, I I, I I can see Jason Whitlock doing it. Whitlock is a very interesting choice, actually, because this is going to bring a lot of them right wing viewers back to him. Yeah. No, I got one that just for pure entertainment factor. Who? Instead, see. Who? Steve, Steve Smith. Smith. Just for entertainment. Steve Smith. Yeah, from Oh, the football player yeah. Steve Smith. That would be interesting. I'd be entertaining. I and agree. You know how I Skip agree. likes to talk to Cowboys. Michael Irvin might go. That would be interesting. Yeah. But does it doesn't Michael Irvin uh work for ESPN though? He was he was doing first take for a little bit, but I don't I don't I think, think he, he was does, under contract. I think he worked for ESPN during the football season too. What about Troy? Oh. Troy works for ESPN. He does Monday Night Football. Not anymore. Last I heard, Troy didn't have an analyst position anymore. Yeah, I don't Troy, think Troy's a good debater though. Troy and Joe Buck are doing Monday Night Football. I don't think Troy would be a good debater though. No. It's got to be somebody like with with live personality like a, like a Michael Irving. Michael Irving is probably a, his best bet if he can get him, and I don't know that he can get him. I don't know. It would be some. I don't know what, where Skip goes from here. Go ahead. You know. You know who I would love to see do it though. Who? Who? Richard Sherman. Oh, that'd be fun. That'd be dope. That'd be fun. Even even Gronk really. But it, no, Richard Sherman. Just because of the history that him and Skip got, that'll be dope. That'll be dope. <laughs> that, I mean, that that'd be like Jalen and Skip. That would be dope. Jalen Rose. Jalen ain't going nowhere. He, he is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that'll be dope. That'll be dope. I agree with you. I think Sherman would be a, a good one. Yeah. So <laughs> there, there are people out there though where Skip can survive this. Yes. Yeah. Well, there's even another option. He doesn't have to do all that. All he really has to do is line up another host who or co-host who can challenge him. And just go and do an interview on Club Shay Shay and be absolutely open. I don't understand what you're saying. Or he could go to Colin Connor. That's what we're talking about, him having another co-host. Or I don't understand what you're saying. Or he can go to hold Colin on, hold Conner. on, Big Ed. I want to, I want to answer. I want him to clarify what he's saying. For reputation purposes, and to make sure that everyone understands that everything's amicable, the best move for him next is to go on the club chat, do an absolutely open and honest interview with. Uh, yeah, but that ain't shit. That won't do a goddamn thing. I mean, no. I'm, looking, I'm talking about for him to do. He got to keep the show going. Yes, right. He's gonna be his new co-host. Who would be his new co-host that, that that he debates every week? 
or every day. That's is that's the challenge. Yeah. That's the challenge. I don't care what his story is. And, and you know what? He tried to start a podcast after after Club Shay Shay took off, but his podcast was just him by himself. I'm delved deeper and blah blah blah, but it was boring because it's just you saying the same shit you say on Undisputed without without a differing opinion. Right. Yeah. But it's interesting. Club Shay Shay was something completely different from Undisputed. Yeah. And was entertaining, you know. So I I think he had to find another guy. So what were you about to say, Began? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off so rudely. I was but gonna we say move on. Well, you just had finished that one right there. I was gonna say he could go the Colin Cowherd route. No, uh uh-uh. uh, he's not he's not entertaining enough. Trust me. I've right. listened to his podcast and puts you to sleep. He <laughs> puts you to sleep by himself because he's too one sided with yeah, his yep. opinion. And and yeah, he'll put you to sleep. He he will he will fail by himself. He needs somebody else. He needs a differing opinion. Okay. Um. That said, I'm gonna get down to what I was talking about earlier. Well, big big shout out to big uh, to John and Mechanic and Chris. Um, me. Uh, they they treated me and Dijon. They said they brought me and Dijon out. Bought us tickets to go see the fight Saturday night. So we all went out to Little Caesars Arena to watch Clarissa Shields as she defeated uh, Marcelo Cornejo in a lopsided unanimous decision. We had a good time. We had a good fun night. We talked a lot of shit. Um, We talked a lot of shit. It was man to man talking shit now. This wasn't no, this wasn't no, no fucking, we wasn't on the line. We was, we was, we was drawing a crowd in the fucking building. They thought we was about to fight. <laughs> Cause we was talking shit and, um, I can't wait to kick their ass, but we had a great man and it was a good little, it was a good little time for me, for, for the four of us to get together and we're going, we're going to get together again. We're going to do it again. Um, we call it Summit One, uh, so we will be getting getting together again and uh, doing this, and keep on talking shit until we until we can finally meet on the field and whoop y'all ass. <laughs> but I say all of that to say, Clarissa Shields refers to herself as the quote. By the way, it was a great fight too. It was a great great time. Uh, Cash Dog came out with Clarissa Shields, and, and she was rapping while she she walked to the while she walked to the ring, and Cash Dog was with her rapping, doing the song Championship, do, 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 Championship. That shit was dope. It was fire. It was fire. I ain't gonna lie. It far exceeded my expectations. Anyway, she refers to herself as the quote G W O A T, the greatest woman of all times, which is. Which she has a case. It's arguable, of course, because you still have Layla Ali out there who was past her prime when uh, Clarissa Shields got in the game. She's from Flint, Michigan, by the way. Clarissa Shields represent Flint, the F-L-I-N-T-N. Uh, oh, we forgot MC Breed. Ain't no future in your front. God damn it. <laughs> Told you it was going to happen. <laughs> anyway, uh... <laughs> Me and my crystal ball over here. Uh, uh, anyway, um, she's the first female boxer to hold all four belts in two different weight classes. Damn. So Damn. she does have a case, is the quote. Yeah. In conversation with another person, he says the GOAT, Floyd Mayweather. And what's your thought? Is Floyd Mayweather the GOAT of boxing? And if not, then who is? I'll drop the mic and listen. And that's that's rough. I will say that Floyd is the greatest defensive fighter ever. But I still got to go with, with average consensus with Muhammad Ali. Ways you got anything to chime in? You're sitting quiet. Quiet. I don't... have a 
few people that I can easily put up there that I believe is up there makes it hard for him to say he is definitively you know Mike Mike Tyson Muhammad Ali Bernard Hopkins Sugar Ray Sugar Ray there's so many Joe Lewis there's so many out there that boxing is it's it's too wide open of a field of the greatest boxers of all time to definitively say there is a goat of boxing. Um, you know that's that's a strong case you make there, uh, but you still I mean that comes with everything though, but you still got to name one. If you had to, let me put it this way. If you had a Mount Rushmore, it may weather on it. If you just had to narrow it down to four, uh, it's Mayweather there. Yeah. Yeah. So sure. what's your four? Mayweather, Tyson, Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard. What about you, Wade? Mayweather, Tyson, Ali, Bernard Hopkins. Oh. Ali. Ali, Sugar Ray Leonard, Mike Tyson, Larry Holmes. Uh, okay. Yeah. Didn't Larry create the Philly Shell? The what? That, that defense they call the Philly Shell. I have no idea. I don't know. I have no idea. I just know, you know, he he was throwing fifty and zero up as his record, but you gotta say, I don't like, but he won the fiftieth fight was against Scott McGregor. It wasn't even a boxer. Conor McGregor, give me a break. <laughs> Conor McGregor, whatever that bitch name is, he, he's not even a he's not even a boxer, man. How is he, that's how is he going to? Larry Holmes won when forty eight zero against boxers, against number one contenders. He didn't wait till the niggas got old. He fought them he, when they were in their prime and whooped their ass. Then he lost to Michael Spinks in a fight that he should have won. And then Mike Tyson beat his ass. And even he said, that's a real champ. Michael Spinks ain't the real champ. That's the real champ right there. That's a real champ. And then Mike, then Mike Tyson beat Michael Spinks' ass. To prove him right. So I mean the dude went 48 and 2, but he was 48 and 0 before he lost to Michael Spinks and and then and, and I hold his 48 and 0 his 48 and 2 at a higher clip than I do uh Mayweather 50 and 0 because he didn't fight everybody. Like in the right. back of the day, everybody fought everybody. Right? I mean that's what I was gonna say about Ali. He fought Frazier, Lewis. You fought them when they tried. <laughs> back then, yep. back then, fighters would fight to be the number one contender. Contender, contenders fought each other to be the number one contender because the number one contender got a title shot. Period. Yep. It wasn't no, I'm the number one contender, and I wait until uh, the money's right, or I wait until I'm old, and I wait until something else happened. Uh, no, it was I'm the number one contender. I get a title shot. That's what I'm here for. And then yeah, he started yeah. throwing the money up. Oh, how much money Mike Tyson got left? Blah, blah, blah. Mike Tyson's doing just fine with money, but you, you're you talking the wrong shit. Right. <laughs> you think Floyd could beat Mike Tyson? <laughs> <laughs> Hell I know, no. I know that's a different conversation, but I mean, since we going to make it about money, come on, man. Did Floyd fight Mike uh, Roy Jones Jr.? Ooh, that's another I don't thing. think so. I think Roy would have put it on him. I don't think you fought Roy Jones. I think Roy would have put it on him. That would have been a nice little. That would have been a nice fight to see. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about he waited till he didn't fight Pacquiao. He had to wait for the money to be right. No, he waited for Pacquiao to lose some, lose some, lose a little bit of speed. Yeah. And he didn't fight Triple G because Triple G would have gotten that ass. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm, I, and I'm not a I'm not a Mayweather hater. I like Floyd. Actually, I like Floyd. Um, I just 
in my day, Sugar fought Tommy, Sugar fought Hagler, Hagler fought uh, Hagler fought Tommy, Tommy fought Duran, Ta- Tommy fought you know Quavez. And th- those are all names. Twice. Sugar fought Benitez. Sugar fought everybody that you fought the guys. All of those names there also could have been on the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> the guys, you fought the guys. You fought the guys yep. who were at the top back then. And that was that was to me the sweet. That's when boxing was was. That's when I was a fan of boxing. To, now to I quote, just now I don't mind boxing. I watch a boxing match and enjoy it. I'm not a boxing fan because it's too much about it. But you can get you can't get paid too much money to fight nobody. Right. So they fight nobody. So ten million dollars ain't nothing to sneeze at. I can get ten mil for fighting Joe Blow. Why yeah, would right. I? Why, why would I? You know, risk losing my title. Why would I risk losing the, uh, a fight? And, and you know that fucks up the game to me. Yeah, yeah. And so, and so that that's what I don't like about Floyd, but I don't dislike Floyd in general. I think Floyd is Floyd is 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 an all time great. Um, he probably, I mean, he's in my top ten. I still put him there, but it's hard for me to put him over the guys from back in the day. Yeah, because they used to fight each other, and and I saw Floyd just dodge a fight until it looked like he it was winnable. Yeah. Same to quote God. Know it's a hoax because he's forty nine and oh, and the fiftieth fight was not against a boxer. Right. To quote Ric Flair, "To beat a man, you got to beat the man." That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's how it used to be. That's my take. That's just how I feel about it. Quick break, man. Before we go on, man, something that I, I wanted to do during the Wade version, I forgot. Um, And I can't save it because I can't keep it to myself. Uh, I just want to do a quick break. Real quick. This was supposed to happen in the last show, but it didn't. I want to share with y'all something that we talked about uh, AI. Remember I played y'all the Drake song that wasn't really Drake? Mm-hmm. Well, somebody did an AI of Sinatra singing a big time hit from, I think it's from the 90s, maybe in the 2000s. But it's by Lil John and the East Side Boys. To the window, to the wall, until the sweat drops down my ball, until all you bitches fall. Oh, she's in goddamn. Right. So I just had to. <laughs> I had to share that with the world before we moved on to the next story. Well, it was still on my mind. I just had to get that out of my system. I, I apologize for that, but that's, you know, I go through these changes, man. The NFL. Back to the NFL now. NFL is probing coach cornerback Isaiah Rogers for possible betting violations. Allegedly, he was using a someone uh, an account under uh, someone else's name, an associate's name, and making a lot of small bets. But some bets were big as into the what they called lower four digits. And not only was he betting on NFL games, he was also betting on Colts games. Oh, allegedly, he gonna give Pete Rose treatment. So my thought is this. My question is this to you guys. Online betting, is that a problem? Is They opened up betting across the country. Sports betting is legal across the country, and you can do it online. Has it become a problem? Because when you say you can do it online, that means you can do it on your phone. Is it a problem, and is it something that we can get under control, or is it going to continue to spiral out of control? What's your thoughts? I would say stiff penalties, but we we all know how stiff penalties work. (laughs) 
I mean, they give you life for murder. That some states they kill you for murder, but we still got people committing murder. Uh, to me, any athlete that bets on their own games, they gotta go. They gotta go, cause you're 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 hurting the integrity of the sport by doing that. I agree with that, and I think we all get that. So, so ways I'm gonna toss it to you because he didn't address the question. He addressed the issue uh, with with this player. The question is. Online betting in general, sports betting, being online, and being, again, online betting means it's also on your phone. Is that a problem, or is, is that some, a problem we'll be able to get under control, or is it something that is going to, you think, will continue to spiral out of control? What's your what's your thoughts? Um, for me personally, the way I'm looking at this is that currently it is a problem. Because not all states uh, have legalized online gambling. So that not only makes a problem for these NFL players, but say you live in Minnesota, you cannot gamble online. Therefore, as a civilian, as just a regular person, you could still get into uh, some trouble for gambling online. So I do believe it is a problem currently. You bring up something extremely interesting because um, you can bet on other sports mm -hmm. uh, as long as you don't do it in the in, in NFL facility mm -hmm. for players that's playing in a state where gambling is illegal. They are, at, I think, potentially at a greater risk when they leave town. Yeah, it becomes more of a civil issue, though because now I'm in Detroit and it's legal here. Is it, but I'm on an NFL trip. So is it illegal for me to gamble in my hotel because I'm on a trip for, um, on behalf, I'm on an NFL trip. So is it illegal for me to gamble or is it only illegal if I gamble in the stadium? So that's a little bit of a trick bag. But see the NFL as a business, has the right to outlaw gambling within any of their facilities isn't though or what they say what they're saying is you can't gamble in their in, in, in nfl facilities and you can't gamble on nfl at all but you can gamble on anything else as long as you do it away from here but if i'm right. on a trip if i'm in my hotel room if i go if i work play for minnesota and I'm playing the, against Detroit this week, and I gamble in my hotel room in Detroit because it's legal here. Did I fuck up? No. No. But but only if I if, only if I gamble in the stadium. Right. In the locker room. Exactly. Right. Because that is that. Hotel. And then only if you but only on if NFL you gamble. Trip. Only if you gamble on non NFL games. Because remember, that's one of the rules. They can't gamble that's on what the I NFL. Said. Well, we already established that. Big Edge, you're repeating me. Okay. No, so I'm just saying. I said it, that, it, though. But I said that already. Go ahead, Wade. To answer, this is talking to circles. To answer your question, is technically when you are in the hotel, you are not within an NFL facility because legally speaking, an NFL facility is, an, is a structure that the NFL owns. Okay, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. And and, and I, I, I'm sure there's language to say whether because even if you're on because like for instance, John Morant got in trouble the first time he flashed a pistol in Denver, but he wasn't in an NBA facility, but he was on an NBA trip. So he was he was it was in the midst of NBA business, right? Right, they have flew to Denver for a game, so you're in the midst of NBA, and you're at the club flashing guns and, and intoxicated. Whereas, um, I don't know if that, and I'm, I'm, I think you're right though. I think you are correct that that's not the same. And betting is that as long as you're not in the Lions facility, if you're not in the locker room or in the stadium, and you're betting, if you're at your hotel, it's okay. 
as long as you're not betting on the NFL. Sure. Um, yeah. So, I, I mean, but will it continue to spiral out of control? Because right now, it, it's 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 a little out of control. It well, seems to be a problem right I now. I think the problem isn't even that. I think the problem is a lack of officiants actually reading through the documents and reading through these handbooks to know about these rules because these are clearly written down rules and if you're reading your manual you're reading your stuff you'll know about this stuff so why why do we get it and we ain't got nothing to lose and these motherfuckers that got can lose millions don't get it i don't that I, i'm not buying that they think they can't be touched they think they can <laughs> get away with it that's what it comes yep. down to Bingo. Finally, Big Ed said some shit that made sense in this conversation. I appreciate that. I'm going I'm to leave right there while I got you on a hot streak. D-Hop is still out there. Where does he land? New England. Ways? is not changing. I still believe he is going to end up in Indianapolis. Indianapolis? Yes. Yeah, I still believe he's going to end up in Cleveland. Yeah, the evidence uh, is strongly ported towards Cleveland right now, but I'm still thinking it's going to be Indiana. I'm thinking Cleveland. I'm thinking, I think Deshaun is going, is going to get him. I think Deshaun is going to get him. That said, folks, it's about that time for us to make our predictions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Are y'all ready? Yes. We're in week seven. Yes. And we're going to start on Thursday, October 19th. The Jaguars visit New Orleans to take on the Saints. Um, I'll go first, and I'm going to take the Jags. Big Ed. Thanks. I'm going to go with those Jags. Go, ho, ho, ho. The Detroit Lions will visit Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Big Ed. Your mic is fucking up, Big Ed. Uh, Wade. He uh, said Detroit, by the way. Yeah, he said Detroit. Uh, this is a lot tougher for me because Detroit really picked up on their uh, defense. But I don't know if they're ready for something like a Lamar Jackson this early in the season. Uh, yeah, I'm going to go with the Ravens. Week seven is not early in the season. And the last season, two seasons ago, when they were three and 13, they were really four and 13 and one because they beat the Ravens. Because the Ravens, uh, why am I hearing it myself? Big Ed. You did something different. Yeah. And I'm hearing myself. Okay. I think, okay. All right. There you go. So, um, what happened was they had a delay a game. It was fourth and 19, and they had a delay a game. And the refs didn't call it. And they ended up picking up that first down and winning the game on a on a 60 on a world on a record breaking field goal. So no, it's payback time. I'm going with the Lions. But, can, all right, so can I re, can I redo my pick? Cuz I yeah. completely forgot about that. Yeah, let me go with the Lions. Oh. Oh, so he, he he did his pick. He changed to the Lions. Uh, Raiders, strong point. Travel to, huh? Made a strong point for me. There you go. The Raiders travel to Chicago to take on the Bears. Ways, man. I'm gonna go with the Raiders. The Raiders are a mess, man. Um, the Raiders are a mess. I think the Raiders are a mess, but this week seven, they will have gotten it together. Jimmy Garoppolo. Is going to put it on a Falapolo, and I'm going with Las Vegas. He is silent. Yes, he's silent. Yes, he is muted. Big Ed is doing the Big Ed, and he ain't done the Big Ed in a while. He is muted, but we already know what he's picking. 
He's Bears. The Bears. <laughs> there you go. There it is. And I don't know what the hell's going on with my microphone tonight. I don't know either, man, but it, it happened. But I knew you was going to pick the Bears. Uh, the Cleveland Browns travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts, and I'm going with Cleveland. Big it? Cleveland. I think Anthony Richardson with D-Hop will be knocking out Cleveland here. I'm going with Indy. Ooh. Um, the Bills travel to New England to take on the Patriots. Big Ed. Bills. Mm. Okay. Wade. Bills. Patriots. Um, Commanders travel to New York to take on the football Giants. Wade. I'm going to have to go with the Giants. I, too, am going with the Giants. Forget. And I make three. And he makes three. The Falcons are traveling to Tampa Bay to take on the Buccaneers. Um, It's on me. Damn. I really want to follow somebody else on this one. <laughs> I'm going with the home team. I'm going to go with the Buccaneers. I'm going to go with the Falcons. Wait. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go with the tie. He's going with the tie. All right. Good deal. <laughs> good <laughs> spot to take That's an impossible a game. That is such an impossible game. The Steelers versus the Los Angeles Rams in Los Angeles. Big Ed. I'm going to go Steelers. Ways. I'm uh, I'm going to go with the Steelers. I'm going to go with the Rams. I'm going with the Steelers. The Cardinals travel to Seattle to take on the Seahawks' ways. And to continue my weekly trend, the Arizona Cardinals are going to still have no wins. The Seahawks will be winning this. I'm with you. I'm with the Seahawks. Wait, big hit. Seahawks. The Green Bay Packers will travel to Denver to take on the Broncos. And I am going with the Broncos. Big Ed. As am I. As am I. All right. All right. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers are traveling to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. Big Ed. Chiefs. Waves. Yeah, no, the Chargers coming out for blood. I'm glad the, I got the Chargers. And I, too, am going with the Chargers. Uh, the Miami Dolphins are traveling to Philadelphia to take on the Eagles' ways. I'll be risky and save the Dolphins. And I'm going to be risky and save the Dolphins. Big Ed. I'm going to go with the Eagles. Monday night football, October 23rd, the San Francisco 49ers travel to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. I'm going with the 49ers. Big A. I'm going with the 49ers. I am Wait. definitely going with the Vikings. All right. All right. He stuck to those sorry Vikings for a week. I'm mean, going against them for the next two. Moving on to week eight. Week eight. What do we have here? Drum roll, please. As it's loading, it's loading, it's loading. Well, damn. How long is it going to take to load? Oh, there it is. I'm, I'm just at the bottom of the page. My bad. Thursday, October 26th. The Buccaneers travel to Buffalo to take on the Bills. Big Ed. Buffalo going to whoop that ass. Ways. We'll go with the Bills. Yeah, that's unanimous. I'm going with the Bills. Um, the Texans of Houston will travel to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Ways. This one will be one versus two. I'm going to go with number one with uh, Bryce Young in Carolina. Me too. I'm going Carolina. Way uh big Ed. Carolina. The Los Angeles Rams will travel to Dallas to take on the Cowboys. Um 
ways? I think I went first last. Did you? No, I thought Big Ed did because I went I went last. Said the Panthers. I told you. Or, or did I? Okay, you're right. You went first, so it's on me. I'm going with the Cowboys, Big Ed. Uh, Cowboys. I am going with the Rams. All right. The Vikings travel to Green Bay to take on the Packers. Big Ed. Vikings. Ways. Vikings. The Green Bay Packers at home. The Saints travel to Indianapolis to take on the Colts. Ways. Uh, I'm going to go with the Saints. So am I. I'm going to go with the Colts. All right. All right. There you go. The New England Patriots will travel to Miami to take on the Dolphins, and I'm going with the Dolphins. Big it? Dolphins. Wave. As am I. As am I. The New York Jets travel to New York to take on the Giants. I guess they don't really travel, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, ways. Who goes first? Big Ed. Big Ed. Go Giants. Ways. Uh, this is the battle for New York, so I'm gonna go with the Jets because Aaron Rodgers. I'm going Jets all day. J e t s Jets. The Jags travel to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. Ways. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Jags. I'm gonna go with the Steelers. Big Ed. I'm also gonna go with the Jags. Atlanta travels to Tennessee to take on the Titans. I'm gonna go with the Titans. Big Ed. I'm going on with Tennessee. I'm gonna go Which with- is another song we missed for the 90s. Damn, you're right. <laughs> All of that shit, Mr. Wendell and, and everyday people, too. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the Titans as well. Okay. The Philadelphia Eagles travel to Washington to take on the Commanders, Big Ed. You said who? Eagles take on the Commanders. Uh, travel Eagles. to Washington. Eagles. Ways. Go with the Eagles. Fuck Calton. I'm going with the Eagles. Uh the Cleveland Browns travel to Seattle to take on the Seahawks. Ways. I'm gonna go with the Browns. I'm gonna go with the Seahawks. As am I. The Ravens travel to Arizona to take on the Cardinals. I'm going with the Ravens. Big it. Cardinals are going to continue their losing ways. So the Ravens. Yeah. And as tradition holds, the yeah. Cardinals is going to have an unwin season because okay. the Ravens will win. The Kansas City Chiefs travel to Denver to take on the Broncos. Big Ed. I'm going to go with the Broncos. Ooh, ways. We'll go with the Chiefs. So am I. I'm going with the Chiefs. Uh, the Cincinnati Bengals travel to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. Waves. I think after being KC, the Chargers are going to be riding on a high, so they will take the win. It's the Bengals against the 49ers, so. What? <laughs> <laughs> No, somebody ain't listening. <laughs> it's the Bengals against the 49ers. Sir. All right, well, then I got the 49ers because uh, obviously the Bengals are not destined to win. I'm going with the 49ers as well. Big Ed. I'm going to go with the Bengals. So, fuck you. <laughs> uh, Chicago is traveling to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers, and I'm going to go with the Chargers, Big Ed. I'm actually going to go with the Chargers also. Wait. Um, I'm going to go with the Chargers. And on Monday Night Football, October 30th, the Las Vegas Raiders 
will travel to Detroit to take on the Lions. Wait. Um. Oh, wait a minute. Big Ed. Uh, I'm going to go with Detroit. Wait. I'm going to go with Detroit. And I, too, am going to go with Detroit. And that wraps it up for week eight. Let's get on to week nine. As it loads, I want to remind everybody that these are way too early predictions that we are making for next season. This is week nine of next season. We have no idea at this point, but we do this every year. Last year, we did it team by team. This year, we're doing it week by week. I kind of like the week by week a little better. Yeah, I yeah. Agree. And Thursday is November 2nd. The Tennessee Titans take on uh, Pittsburgh Steelers in Pittsburgh. Who is on? Me? Ways. Uh, yeah, me. I go with Ways. Uh, I'm going to go with the Steelers. I'm going to go with Tennessee. I'm going to go with Pittsburgh. Okay. The Dolphins travel to Kansas City to take on the Chiefs. And I'm going with the Chiefs. Big Ed. Make that to us. And I will most shockingly go with the Chiefs. Okay. The Minnesota Vikings travel to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Uh, Big Ed. <laughs> Minnesota. Ways. Yeah, as I'm on. Yeah, Minnesota. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks travel to Baltimore to take on the Ravens. Good game there. Uh, what you talking yeah, about, game. Ways? I'm going to go with those Seahawks. I'm going to go with the Ravens. Big Ed. Either way, a bird's going to win. But the Seahawks are going to win. <laughs> yeah, a bird's going to die. Uh, the <laughs> Arizona Cardinals take on the Cleveland Browns in Cleveland. I'm going. Is it on me? I'm going with the Cleveland Browns. Big Ed? I'm also going with Cleveland. And to no surprise, I am going with the Cleveland Browns. And the Los Angeles Rams. <laughs> we ain't going to let him drag that out. We already know his answer. The Los Angeles Rams are traveling to Green Bay to the Frozen Tundra to take on the Packers. Big Ed. What month are we in now? We are in November. Oh, Green Bay. It's Wait. cold. <laughs> I do not agree. I'm going with the Rams. I'm going with the Packers. Um, on uh, Tampa Bay, we'll travel to Houston to take on the Texans. Big Ed. Tampa Bay, because Houston's giving Arizona the second pick. <laughs> Tampa Bay. Wait. Oh, you know what? Well, I'm sorry. It was it was Waze's pick. But anyway, Waze, who you got? Oh, man. I'm going with C.J. Stroud and those Houston Texans. Uh, I'm going to go with Houston as well. Um, the Commanders are traveling to New England to take on the Patriots. Waze. Um, we're with the Patriots. So am I. Big hit. I'm going to go with the Patriots too. Okay. Three for three. The Chicago Bears are traveling to New Orleans to take on the Saints. And I'm going with... I'm going with the Saints. Big hit. I'm going to go with Bears. That was a close one, though. Ways? I'm going to go with the Bears as well. I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of leaning Bears, but it, because it's in New Orleans, I'm going with the Saints. Uh, the Indianapolis Colts um, are traveling to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Big hit. Ooh, that's going to be a good game, too. Yes. I'm going to go Carolina. Ways. I'm going to go with the Colts. I'm going to go Carolina. The Giants are traveling to Las Vegas to take on the Raiders' ways. Uh, I'm going to go with those Giants. I'm going to go with those Giants. Big Ed? Giants. Giants. The Cowboys travel into Philadelphia to take on the Eagles. Fuck Carlton, I'm going with the Eagles. Big Ed? Oh, Cowboys. Ways. Yeah, I'm going with the Eagles. Buffalo traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Big Ed. 
AFC Championship preview. I'm going to go Buffalo. Ooh, hey. I'm going to go with the Bengals. They ain't taking it twice. I'm taking the Bengals as well. And Monday night, uh, November 6th, the Los Angeles Chargers travel to New York to take on the Jets. Wait. Chargers still on a hot streak. I'm going Rodgers as well with the Jets. What you say, Big Ed? Jets. J-E-T-S. Jets. That's it for our picks, but that is not it for the show. Okay. What we got left? I have one more basketball story. Okay. Came out late today. That it is a potential leak that Adam Silver is allegedly seem to be facing giving Ja Morant a 40 game suspension. Hmm. Understand the season is 82 games long. Not the season. So it looks like he's facing a potential 40 game suspension. Any thoughts? I can see it happening. I mean, twice in one year, you got caught doing the same thing that you wasn't supposed to do. So obviously, you didn't learn the first time when we just suspended you for a few games. So yeah, now we now we really finna hit your pocket. <laughs> gonna hit you with the max I can hit you with. Yep. So well, yeah, he's gonna be. You got any thoughts, Wade? Yeah. Um, he's learning the hard way right now, and he's very lucky it's not the hard hard way because right now he's only getting it from his job. But so I, the worst way is he could be locked up right now. Yeah, that is very true potentially. Uh, so I'm going to close the show with this. I want to thank everybody for joining the off season. I want to thank you for joining us. If you like what you see, like what you see, subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for joining us. See us again next week. I'm your boy, OG Tim Wilson on behalf of big Ed and ways, the nasty boys. Uh, I want to send you out with this. Another guy that has something to say about the John Morant situation. Simba. You ain't coming to the die, nigga. To my nigga out in Memphis, moving senseless, I love you. You someone that my nephew and all my cousins look up to. You sell out every game at every stadium you come to, and you made it out environments that most of us get stuck to. A lot of college coaches wish they never would have snubbed you, because you bought on all them niggas that recruiters ranked above you. Drafted number two, all them niggas ended up under you, and now you at the top, so it's certain shit that can't come with you. But I get it, this life we live in is different. We flex in front of the cameras to show the ghetto we did it. Some of us like the flex just to show the rest they can get it, but you glorify a life that you really ain't out here living i mean my nigga you up 200 million and you about to risk it all to show niggas you bought a pistol it's one thing if you do it once we'll dismiss it but you done done it twice in two months nigga you tripping I blame the culture, we put you in this position The music we make influences you young niggas' decisions To me, when rappers say they ain't role models, they bitching They're running from responsibilities that we was given Feel like it's all on your shoulders Only 23, but the world wants you to be older A bunch of bad bitches and liquor at your disposal When the people you do business with think they supposed to control you The homies look at you as a way that they can get going Your family on your back and that pressure could be enormous The media gon' pick you apart and try to destroy you Your niggas gotta learn to protect you and not record you I get it, my nigga I promise I get it, my nigga But you gotta understand you different, my nigga it's a lot of gangsters who gifted, but they ain't get the opportunity to transition. Well said. We out of here. It's the off season, y'all. Till next time. Peace. Oh.